There are a few indices that test spirituality. Let me tell you. And I, I want you to be able to... These are like, you know how you go to the hospital and they check your vitals. There are a few vitals that once you check and you find out there's a problem, meet a doctor immediately. Not a medical doctor and not a witch doctor. A doctor meaning a teaching priest, a spiritual person who helps you. You see that? Among them, let me tell you this. You see this thing called gluttony. Gluttony. An irresistible appetite for food. Now, food is good. Don't get me wrong. I mentioned food now. Some of you are not happy. Food. It is a great test of spirituality if you can tame your eating. Am I saying it's not good? Go and eat. But I'm saying the moment is something that you cannot resist. Number two, sleep. 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 As much as sleep is a very important thing, you need to be careful. Some of you slumber. You wake up. The Holy Ghost wakes you. And just to get up and stretch yourself and take your destiny serious, there are many people who will not do that. Slumber. Are we together? Number three, the eroding of your values. Eroding of your values. Eroding of your values. Vibrancy spiritually. I'm praying for you in the name that is above all names. That every attack on your spiritual life. I hope you know when the devil attacks your spiritual life. It's not just prayer he's attacking you. It's not just the word he's attacking. Are we together? It's not just your consecration he's attacking. Let me tell you what he's attacking. He's attacking what prayer will achieve. What the study of the word will achieve. Your prayer and the rest and the word study is not the end. It's the means to an end. That your life becomes a greater host of his power and his glory. And let me tell you the truth. As he's fighting it back, you will not see the destruction in one day. Just allow it continue. One day it will fall upon you like a pack of cards. And you will see that there is no strength again. For someone, you came to church tonight for a renewal. And I'm praying for you. Whatever has quenched your fire upon that altar, in the name of Jesus, since the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, may the spirit of the living God light that candle afresh. Light that candle afresh. Look at me, please. You don't off a rotating fan by risking your hand to stop the blades from moving. How do you off a rotating fan? You disconnect it from source. Am I right? You disconnect it from source. Once you match, even if it's by mistake, the cord that connects it to the power source, the blade will still be rotating, sometimes still fast, and then gradually, gradually, and then at any time, it stops. And sometimes it can stop one day to you entering the next season of your prophecy. Hallelujah. Why is it that people do not obtain the grace to finish? Why is it that they become complacent? The destructions that come to you, the suggestions that come to you when you reduce yourself from spirituality to carnality. What am I doing now? Tell me the progress. Am I doing very well? What is your self? What are they saying about you? And then if you surround yourself with psychophants and naysayers, ah, you are king of kings and lord of lords. In fact, the last person said you're kind of anointing. From Bible days, aside from Paul, nobody has had it. And you say, you mean it? And you foolishly believe that thing because the spirit of counsel is no longer with you. Counsel comes with might. There is something you hear to sustain your strength. Is someone learning now? I'm planting a fire in you tonight that you can see a man of God after you return from a meeting lifting people from wheelchairs you get back to the place of prayer as if you have never healed the sick before now that is the attitude of a winner in the spirit that's the attitude of a winner I tell you the truth before God and I lie not. It doesn't matter what kind of meeting I go to. It doesn't matter how spectacular the manifestations of God. As soon as I return back, once I leave that church auditorium, I return back, Father, thank you. Once I'm done from Koinonia, I get back home, get on my knees. Lord, I'm grateful for the mighty things you have done. 
next get to work. You check my phone now. There is a series of teachings that I'm following, building my own capacity. I suspended it to come to church to teach. When I return back home, I have to listen to the quota that I have and then listen to tonight's teaching. No matter how tired, it's a ritual, it's a covenant. They say uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Most people want a crown that is clearly not the size of your head. See that? You are so small, the crown will even fall down. Your whole body cannot even carry it. And yet we wish and covet things we don't have capacity for. Build your spiritual fire. Build your capacity. For someone, you are saying, Apostle, where do I start? Your prayer life. Immediately I will tell you, your prayer life. Make up your mind. Are we together? What's the one thing holding you back from living the life God has called you to? I bet it's fear. Fear that whispers, you're not enough, you can't do it, you'll fail. But what if I told you, God never intended for you to live in fear? In fact, he has given you everything you need to overcome it. Today, we're going to talk about how to break free from the chains of fear and walk in the boldness that God has already placed inside of you. And it all starts with one thing, faith. Let's dive in. Fear is something we all face. It can be paralyzing, overwhelming, and even make us doubt God's promises. But here's what we need to understand. Fear is not from God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let that sink in for a moment. Fear is not your identity. Power, love, and a sound mind are. Fear doesn't get the final say in your life. God's power does. I know some of you are watching this right now feeling like fear has gripped every area of your life. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. But here's the good news. Jesus is greater than your fear. When you feel anxious or afraid, you're not meant to carry that weight alone. In fact, Jesus invites us in. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Fear can weigh you down. It can make you feel like you're carrying a burden too heavy to bear. But God is saying, come to me. Give that fear to me and I'll give you peace. When you put your trust in God, you start to realize that he's bigger than your fears. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminds us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is literally promising that you don't have to do it alone. He's holding you up even when the fear feels overwhelming. What if instead of focusing on your fears, you started focusing on God's promises? Practical steps to overcome fear. So how do we practically overcome fear in our daily lives? Here are three key steps. Number one, meditate on God's word. The Bible is full of promises that combat fear. One of my favorites is Joshua chapter one, verse nine. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Read scriptures like this daily. Remind yourself of God's truth and fear will lose its grip on your heart. Number two, pray boldly. Prayer is not just asking God for things, it's an exchange. When you come to God in prayer, give him your fear and receive his peace. Philippians chapter four verses six to seven tells us, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number three, take action in faith. Fear tries to freeze you in place, but faith moves you forward. Whatever God is calling you to do, do it despite the fear. That's where real courage comes from. Not the absence of fear, but moving forward through it with the strength of God by your side. In conclusion, listen, I don't know what fears you're facing right now, but I do know this. God has already given you the power to overcome them. You don't have to live in fear anymore. 
you can live boldly, confidently, and courageously because God is with you. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, don't let fear have the final word in your life. Instead, let faith rise up. Let God's promises lead the way. If this message has touched you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that will strengthen your walk with Christ. Let's break free from fear together.